As evidenced by some of the t-shirt choices I've made over the years, and also probably my MacBook skin as well, I'm colorblind. I'm red-green colorblind, which is the most common type, but statistically speaking, 10% of the people watching this video will have some form of color blindness. It's something that can affect all aspects of everyday life, and it's particularly dependent on the choices which designers and manufacturers make. It's possible to make good choices which mitigate or indeed even completely remove the hurdles that color blindness presents us with. But those choices have not been made in the default color palette in Cubase. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can change that and make it better to work with color whether you're color blind or not. So on screen you see the source of my annoyance about this. Now this is 16 parts which have been coloured with the default spectrum which you can see here. So these are the default colours. Now for me personally I find that these three here don't look significantly different. If you placed one of these uh, far away from these and said which one of these three colours is it, it would just be a game of random chance as to which I chose and two thirds of the time I would be wrong. I think the two greens for me aren't particularly different. So these two here aren't drastically different and I would often choose one instead of the other accidentally. This and this don't look drastically different again. And I appreciate anybody who's got normal color vision will be just going, what? Are you blind? As it turns out, I'm color blind. So this is nothing new to me. I remember whenever it was, I was probably about seven when they colorblind tested me at school, you know, and they give you the, the test with all the dots and you have to say a number that you can see or if you can see anything. And obviously I got them all wrong and everyone else in the class was like, are you an idiot? It says 22. It's like, no, I'm not an idiot. I'm colorblind. That's the difference. Anyway, there is a solution to this. So there is a much nicer palette, which is much easier to see, but it involves editing the colors, which is what we're going to look at next. So on screen, you can see a palette which I found from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about to do with color blindness. And this palette is supposed to be helpful for everybody, not just with red green color blindness as I have, but with other forms of color blindness as well. So here are the values we're interested in. So we're going to put them in in RGB values. So the first color, Tyrian purple, is 104, 2, and 63. So we can edit that pretty easily. So you've got either under project, you've got project color set up, or you can press the keyboard shortcut to open that up. And you get the editor. To edit this, it's pretty straightforward. Just click on the color and then you get a pop-up which appears and then you can put those numbers in. So we want 104, two, and 63. So there is the beautifully named Tyrian purple. and that process is then repeated for the rest of the color palette. So you go through, edit all of those. I've sped it up on screen because obviously you don't want to have to go through all that, but you can edit that, put that all in there. And then once they're all in, if you click apply, you will get what's seen on screen. So the last color, I've actually gone for just primary red. So that's 25500 because I can identify that. And also it's one that I just like using for marking out things that I've screwed up that I need to fix later. So now with that done, and then you press apply, your project will now reflect this. So here you can see those colors. Now I can identify any of these colors reliably at any distance from any of the others. So it's much, much easier. So this is one of those examples where People who studied this actually do know what they're talking about, which is a societal problem we have uh, where people go, oh, you know, experts, what are experts for? Well, it turns out that this guy actually knows what he's talking about. The research they've done pays off because this to me is absolutely great. I no longer feel kind of intimidated by the colors and thinking, oh, you know what? I don't want to use them because I'm not sure which is which. Statistically, one in 10 of you watching this video will feel the same way. Uh, it's about one in 10 men and it's about one in 200 women. So this is one of these things where people say, oh, no women are colorblind. It's not actually true. It's one in 200 have some form of colorblindness, but it's much more common in men. My channel statistics say 98% of the people who watch these videos are male. So therefore, about one in 10 of you are going to have the same problem. 
So the eagle-eyed amongst you will have spotted that I've actually changed this to a different project during the course of that. The reason being is that Cubase's management of this isn't particularly great, so there's no option to just export a palette or import a palette. But what is available is saving it in a project because as the menu suggests, the project color setup is part of your project. So if I load up another project, even though I've changed my defaults here to this, if I load up a different project, I will get the color scheme for that project, which is saved with it. So this is useful because we can use this as a mechanism to transport color schemes between computers. And also you can change your color scheme and then save the default. So if you decide that was the worst thing ever, you can go back to the default ones, although you, there is a different button for that, as we'll see. But also, then maybe if you want to come back to the colorblindness family, you can do that as well. So all you need to do is to save your project. So in this case, let's return back to the default factory settings. And that's done under the project color setup window. So under options, we have this reset color set to factory settings. So if I do that and then click apply, you see that my colors in my colorblind project have now gone and we've gone back to that. But handily, you can undo that. So I'm just gonna undo that because what I don't wanna do is to save on this project, remove my nice colorblind scheme and then have to type them all in again because that is painful. But if we've changed our default, so whatever we've set the color set as default as, whether it's factory settings or it's from our current one, then any new project will make use of that. So we're just gonna save that as the default, click apply. So we can see we've got this here, but this has now been saved as the default. So if I make a new project, we can see that it's inherited these colors here. So that's the default that I'm gonna use from this point onwards because I'm pretty happy with those colors. But if we load up those, Factory settings. So there's our factory settings there, and then we save those as the default. So now our current ones, so this factory settings are now the default. If I make another new project, you can see it's inherited those. So whatever you save as the default will be what new projects use, but any project that you load up will have its own color settings. And we can see that pretty clearly here because we know what the default is here. But if I switch back to my colorblind one and activate it, we can see it has those there. So you can even have projects open at the same time which have different palettes in. The, the crucial thing is, if you want to use this on an ongoing basis, set it as the default and then you're there. If you saved a project with a nice color scheme in, you can always come back to it even if Cubase screws things up when you upgrade to a new version or anything like that, or your preferences get lost or you have to trash them. It will be pretty quick and easy to do it. So although there isn't an import and export available, which is a little bit annoying, you've got the way of doing it just by saving it in a project. So to that end, what I'm gonna do is make this project available on my website, zipped up, so it'll be pretty small because there's only a MIDI track with a few colors, et cetera, in there. And then if you wanna use this without having to go through the rigmarole of typing all those numbers in, you'll be able to just download and open this project and then you can manage it by saving them as default and then see how you get on with that. So there you go, that's my take on how to improve the color palette used in Cubase to make it more effective to work with color, regardless of whether you're colorblind or not. Although I appreciate the benefits will be greatest if you're like me, you're colorblind. <laughs> As ever, I hope you found the video useful, and if you have, please comment, like, and maybe even subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.